So the other night, um, I was sitting on the couch watching television, and my wife was in the kitchen doing some dishes and cleaning up after dinner, and she asked me to come in and help, and I kind of gave her the litany of reasons why I shouldn't. Uh, I just worked all day. I'm tired. I just want to relax. And I started thinking about it. Luckily, I had a moment, and I thought, what's my strategy here? Um, <laughs> My strategy is that as a husband, I want to be very loving and helpful and in service to my wife, so much so that she starts bragging about me to her friends on Facebook. That's my strategy. So I got up and helped. And it, uh, it pays to think with strategy, and that's what I'm going to talk about and encourage you to do. Uh, when you come to something like this, and I'm often at farm conferences, it's easy to be in the audience and get excited, right? You're, Today, your palms were sweating at some point, your heart was racing, you were hearing new ideas, you were thinking of projects that you want to take on, and what I'm going to ask you to do is tackle those new ideas with a strategy, a very specific and defined strategy. Um, at heart, I'm an economist, and I'm sort of apologetic about being an economist, but I'm really thinking about you attacking those ideas efficiently. So I'm thinking about the efficiency of the use of all of your resources, um, mainly time and money. Like, again, I work with farmers and, and labor, and uh, cash are big issues. So how do we you know, how do, we do this? Um, I, I'm going to take it from the perspective of marketing, marketing strategy. I believe that we're all in marketing, especially when you look at my definition of marketing, which is identifying the customer's needs and preferences and desires, and then creating a product to satisfy those desires. It's not what we think of marketing as, which is tricking people into taking what you have, right? No, instead, we're gonna, we're gonna envision ourselves as marketers who understand our customer and are really trying to always up the level of service in what we do. So, I teach this to farmers all the time, um, the way to go about it, and the way I encourage them to go about it, is first of all, you need to stop. Because if you're really busy and you're running around and you're putting out fires, you won't have time to plan. So stop what you're doing and discuss exactly, as specifically as possible, what it is that you want to do. Discuss it with your team, get thoughtful, sit down and talk about it for 20 minutes or a half an hour. And if you think about it, the opposite of strategy is probably autopilot. And what's an autopilot response? It's what we did last year, and what we've seen others do, and what is sort of natural to fall into. So let's look at an example. If we were gonna start a vegetable farm, a brand new vegetable farm, we might take some autopilot marketing responses. So let's create a brochure, and a Facebook page, and we can get a website put up, and we'll join the local farmer's market. And there's nothing wrong with any of those responses, but they are sort of autopilot responses. Uh, on the other hand, I met a farmer from Pennsylvania who had done just that. He and his family had started a new farm and opened a new farm store. And he was running ads in the local paper to try to get customers into his store. And he sat down and he figured out that it was costing him about $5 for each new customer that he acquired by putting these ads in the paper. And he said, you know, I've got to buy customers for less than $5 a piece. Right? This is too expensive. It's taking too much time. What he came up with was brilliant. He went down to the local BMW dealership, and he talked with their sales team. And he said, whenever you take a customer out for a test drive, bring them by my farm store. I will give you and your customer either a free coffee or a free ice cream. Now, that cost for him was going to be $2 per visit. So all of a sudden, he, it worked, they started bringing them by the farm store, and he was buying customers for $2 a piece, and not just any customer that reads a newspaper, BMW test driving customers. And <laughs> I could tell you get it. <laughs> all right, uh, I, I teach, I'm gonna step back, we, I teach strategy to farms at conferences all the time, and I usually like to ask the audience then, if your marketing strategy for your farm today is, we sell whatever we have, to anyone who will buy it, raise your hand. And they all raise their hands and they all start laughing because they know it's true. Uh, but I'm just encouraging them to move their marketing one step forward. And I use a sentence like this that I think anyone could use even if they're not a farm. You just fill in the blanks here. Our farm raises. And then you describe your products and you use the adjectives and claims that would go along with your product. Four, 
and you describe a specific audience of target customers. And then you describe them even more. And what do they do? Why are they looking for you? So you're just gonna write this sentence really specifically and using strategy this way will give you some great tools to go about your work efficiently. For one, you can evaluate opportunities as they're presented to you. Do you want your farm to come to this event? We're inviting you to come. We think it would be lovely to have a farm there. And you have to evaluate if it fits your strategy. The other thing is it can guide the decisions that you make as you go about your marketing. Let's look at some examples. I was teaching strategic marketing to a group of producers, and one of them was an 11-year-old boy who raised chickens. His parents had brought him in, he was doing really well, and he wanted to improve his marketing. He was a great student. Um, so I challenged each person in the class to write that sentence, and his first crack at it read something like this. Our farm raises pastured animals for families in our neighborhood who care about quality and where their food comes from. It's pretty good but I gave him a hard time about it. It's not very specific. It doesn't gu give you any guidance. If you ask people if they care about quality and where their food comes from, they all say yes. So we don't have a specific group. So I started talking to him to find out more. Well, first of all, he was limited. He can't drive. So he has to sell these chickens where either his customers will stop by or he can deliver them himself. He can only sell whole chickens because that's a law in New York State. And Lastly, he said, out of frustration, you know, the thing is, with these families who live around me, they don't know what to do with a whole chicken. They're used to buying cuts at the grocery store, and all the recipes are based around individual cuts. I said, oh, the, the light went on for me. Your farm raises pastured chickens for families in a four block radius who don't know how to use your product. <laughs> and I said to him, so what do you do when you're selling something to people who don't know how to use it? And he was very creative and 11, so he came up with all these great ideas. Oh, oh, well I could have a potluck and I could cook a bunch of chickens and they could try the different ways that we eat them. I can hand out recipes. He said, I'm even growing herbs so I can give out packages of herbs with those recipes. I could do a butchering demonstration and show people how easy it is to cut a chicken into the different cuts and freeze the individual cuts so they can cook normally. He had lots of great ideas and that was something that came out of his strategy. It's not just for the farms that I work with, it's also for the big corporations. The North Face is a fun one to, to, to play with. I think we could agree if we were to write a strategy statement for the North Face, it might be something like, we make extreme cold weather gear for people who summit the nation's highest peaks or the world's highest peaks. And they don't just summit those high peaks, they go up the North Face, which in this hemisphere is the most difficult face of a mountain to climb. Now that might be their very specific audience, but my point in bringing this up is they haven't lost all the rest of you who don't summit mountains, right? So by focusing on a specific population or a specific audience, you don't lose everyone else. In fact, you create such a clear identity about what you do and who you serve that you become attractive to everyone else. And as you probably know, most undergraduates at Cornell own something made by the North Face, right? And very few of them are going to summit the highest mountains in the world. Another example that I really enjoy is a, a natural beef farm that I work with in the Finger Lakes. And they, they too had written one of those sort of bland statements about families who care about where their food comes from and healthy natural beef. So we needed to improve that by making it more specific. The term I use is silly specific. It should sound a little silly when you say it, right? Um, so he was telling me uh, about their farm and about their customers, but it wasn't really going anywhere. Then he started telling me that he's always training for and competing in triathlons and Ironman competitions. And in fact, his farm has even sponsored some of those competitions locally. So I encouraged him to write a sentence focused around that audience. And you could see that, that a sentence like that would would inform so many of the decisions that he had to make. He knows how extreme athletes uh, select their food based on protein and fat and serving size. He would know what kind of packaging to use, how big the package should be, the language to describe the product, all of the where to sell, where to advertise, where to promote. He could be the natural bee farm for extreme athletes. 
So my uh, charge to you today is to use strategy. You could see that whether you actually have a product to sell or you're looking at your job and your relationships, there's ways to use strategy to get it accomplished uh, so much better to understand your customer and serve them. And lest you think that The Economist told you to do something very limiting with this very specific sentence, I want you to recognize that it's actually a freedom to have a sentence like this to guide your work because all you have to do is accomplish what you've said. And so the way you go about it is completely open. I think it fosters a lot of creativity and innovation. Thanks.